Taylor, thank you for joining us here at the Adelaide Vegan Festival. It's great to have you um, here. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey, um, what you're involved in, um, for those people who don't know about that? Yes, yeah, so what I'm involved in is I have fasting retreats in Bali. Um, so anywhere from, hey, come to a seven-day fasting retreat, let's go on adventures, let's have a lot of fun, let's get through a lot of educational stuff. And you're kind of supported in an environment to do a juice fast. So it's like organic, cold press, beautiful juices and staying busy enough that people feel like at the end of seven days, they're like, wow, I can't believe I just did a seven day juice fast. And the idea is to just lock in, you know, the first time you do a fast, you anchor whether it's going to be a good experience or it's going to be a really horrible experience. So a lot of people that, you know, hear about the benefits of fasting and want to do it, but they try it at home. You know, it's, it's a hard process when you're used to cooking there and everybody's telling you fasting's gonna kill you, there's too much sugar, there's all these opinions of people, and so it makes it really tough. So we provide that environment to have a good experience with fasting. Uh, and then all the way up to, I have a 30-day program uh, that is extended water fasting, and it's more for like chronic conditions. So we accept people with, you know, anywhere from a minor tumor. We've had people with brain tumors, uh, stage four lymphoma, colon cancer, liver metastasis cancer, heart disease, people with high blood pressure, even people told they need to have open heart surgery. Um, so we accept quite, quite chronic cases and we use um, the modern science of what fasting does. Essentially when we get out of the way uh, and just allow the body some space to heal, that's exactly what it does. It starts to heal itself. Um, I employ a clinical fasting doctor that comes out from the United States to come in and monitor morning and night every single person to do blood tests to see how they're healing, uh, how their liver function is improving, kidney function, and where their cancer markers are coming down. So that's kind of a gamut of what I've been into for the past six years is facilitating fasting on kind of all different levels. Talk us through some of the changes that you see in, in a week's time in these people that take part. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of people are just, you know, used to, oh, you know, it's 8 o'clock, I need to have my breakfast. Oh, it's noon, I need to have lunch. Oh, you know, I, I need to snack on something. Oh, it's dinner time, I need to have this. So, like, we spend our lives waking up and thinking about food and then kind of snacking and then thinking about where are we going to eat and then cleaning up and then spending money. And our whole lives are kind of just food. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks and always looking for places to eat and things. So what I notice most is people are like, wow, we've got like a day is so much longer than I thought it was and I can get so much more done. Um, and there's just like, I think when you're not just thinking about where you're going to eat next, there's a whole new world that kind of opens up, you know, the things that you're passionate about, things you want to talk about. And the reality is when you're digesting a lot of heavy food, it's, it's tiring. So you feel lethargic. Some people develop chronic fatigue syndrome. And they think they need more food to get over that when actually they need less to allow the body a little bit of space. So I see people come in and in seven days they're lighter, they're brighter, they're happy, they're sharing, they're really open. Uh, probably because we do a lot of other, you know, team building stuff and, and empowerment kind of things. We go whitewater rafting um, and we do a lot of exercise and education. But people leave there just like, wow, you know life can actually be so much different to what I thought it needed to be to be healthy. And all of a sudden, like people might go home and just do a level of intermittent fasting. Maybe they just skip breakfast and allow the body to detox and exercise and clean themselves out before, you know, starting their whole meal time. So yeah, I find that people are a lot lighter, brighter, and just coming away with um, knowing what to do every day to support this thing of health. You know, every morning we do very specific activities just to wake the body up, open our endocrine system, go for a long walk, etc. So what's the message that you're bringing to this festival and what would you like people to walk away with? Uh, the message I'm bringing is we need to get back to eating plants. Um, if you look at all the long-lived cultures like Blue Zones all around the world, Okinawa, you know, south of Japan, Hunza people of Pakistan, all of these cultures eat a very high plant-based diet. They exercise, they have good relationships, they have passion, they support each other. So it's not just about our diet, there's a lot of things involved, but the common denominator in all long-lived cultures is that they eat a lot of plants. 
And I think that we're really out of balance in our Western culture. You know, if you want to have bacon and eggs on toast for breakfast every day, a chicken salad for lunch, and some type of steak or a hamburger or some hamburger and whatever it is you're eating, it's very, very, very unsustainable for the planet, you know, to kill that many animals just so every single person can eat meat three times a day creates a lot of pollution and it takes a massive amount of food to feed the animals. Um, so that's kind of the me overall message that I have. We eat more plants, our body is, is in a much healthier state. Thank you very much for joining us today and um, I hope you do enjoy the, the festival and um, yeah, and we look forward to sort of following your journey along the way as well. Beautiful, cheers, thanks for having me.